Hi, good morning. Last night I watched Cat Person on Hulu, and if I hadn't already opted out of the dating scene years ago, I would have after watching this movie. The movie does a good job of showcasing the different anxieties people have when it comes to dating, and I think it really highlights the differences between what men are worried about versus what women are worried about when it comes to interacting with the opposite sex. Cat Person is an adaptation based on a short story of the same name that follows 20-year-old college student Margot as she starts seeing Robert, an older guy who got her phone number while she is working concessions at the movie theater. Already, I don't love it because she is working, but okay. They text back and forth, and then they hang out once and then twice, and the power dynamic kind of goes back and forth between the two of them until their redo date that ends with Margot having sex with Robert despite not really wanting to. After she heads back to her dorm and decides she's not really into 33-year-old Robert, she agonizes over drafting him a text to kind of let him down gently, but her friend takes her phone and texts him, Hi, I'm not interested. Stop texting me. Robert takes it well at first, but some weeks later, he sees her in a bar near campus that she had previously mentioned to him before, so like, he went there on purpose, and her friends huddle around her to try to keep him from seeing her, but it didn't work. He saw her and he starts texting her. Sorry, not texting. He starts blowing up her phone. At first, he tells her she looked pretty at the bar, but it quickly devolves as he questions what he did wrong, tells her that he misses her, asks if the guy that she was with is her boyfriend or just some guy she's fucking, and demands that she answer him before calling her a whore. This is where the short story ends, and it's a little different from the movie, but I don't think it's too different in that it changes anything. The movie starts with a quote that says, Men are afraid women will laugh at them, but women are afraid men will kill them. And we get both sides of that in this movie, with Margot having daydreams of Robert attacking her when she feels unsafe, and then Robert lashing out when he feels rejected. I'm pretty sure all of that was in the trailer, so I don't consider it spoilers, but spoiler warning for the rest of the movie. After Margot leaves Robert's text unanswered, she sees him outside her work, and when she heads home after work, she fears that he waited for her, so she calls the police, who of course say that he hasn't committed a crime. The police officer is not only unhelpful, but also rude when she tells Margot to stop watching true crime, which I think is actually an insane take for a police officer to have. Because wouldn't they be the ones most familiar with the violence that happens against women, especially from men they know? So, like, to think that Margot's fear is unjustified seems so weird to me, but I guess it tracks. And side note, Margot's a little dumb because when she leaves work, she puts her earbuds in with her phone battery already low and listens to music as she's walking home alone. And I can't wrap my head around that because, like, you're afraid somebody is waiting for you and so you tune out the world. Well, with her justifiable fear being dismissed, Margot decides the only way to stay safe is to know where Robert is at all times, so she sneaks over to Robert's house to put a tracker on his car, which is when she runs into a dog that she saw outside her dorm at the very start of the movie. Robert catches her in the garage, and as she's piecing together that Robert must have followed her home to her dorm, she panics, and Robert tries to grab the tracker, and Margot accidentally pepper sprays herself in the face and then falls and hits her head. She wakes up in Robert's house as he's freaking out, saying that she can't leave because he'll go to jail for what happened, even if it wasn't exactly his fault. She gets him to leave the room and tries to escape, but he stops her and they struggle, Margot trying to get away from Robert because she's afraid of what he could do to her, and Robert not letting Margot leave because he's afraid that he'll be blamed for her injuries. It's funny because at one point Robert says, oh, they always believe the woman, but Margot knows that's not true. Robert tries to subdue Margot, which he might have experience with because he's a nurse, but it's really just terrifying for Margot because he's so big. Earlier in the movie, Margot liked that he was tall, but now, not so much. They end up falling down the stairs into the basement where a space heater falls over and starts a massive fire. Which is why you don't leave space heaters running in rooms that you aren't in. Unable to escape out the windows, Robert opens a drain and climbs in, calling for Margot to join him. At first, she doesn't, but with no other choice, she runs over and pleads with him to let her in, which he does. They both survive, and Robert moves far away, as far as Margot knows. I like the way the movie explores everything with Margot, but there is a lot here about Robert, and I think that's really interesting, too. Robert's explanation for following her home at the start of the movie is that he just wanted to meet a pretty girl in real life instead of on an app, and that is reasonable, but it becomes unreasonable and inappropriate when 1. That girl is a 20-year-old and you're a 33-year-old man, and 2. You follow her home from work. 
The movie also incorporates Robert's interest in Harrison Ford, and at one point, he sends Margot a compilation of what he thinks are romantic scenes, but Taylor calls them out as kind of like predatory behavior. Characters like Han Solo and Indiana Jones forcing themselves on women who seemingly aren't interested, but reciprocate and swoon anyway. It highlights the way that the media we consume informs our perception of romance. Robert genuinely thought that the scene between Han and Leia is romantic, and that's why he took her to that movie. But when Margot doesn't really like it, he feels insecure, and he imagines a therapy session where he vents about his intention versus her reception. That doesn't let Robert off the hook, though, because he learns that Margot is 20 when she can't get into a bar, and after his initial frustration claiming that he thought she was older, I don't know if I even believe that. He sees that she feels embarrassed and he like likes that she feels sad and vulnerable. So instead of doing the correct thing to do in this moment, which would be to disclose that you are 33 and take this 20 year old home, he just takes her to another bar so she can drink. Robert's taking advantage of Margot in this moment. Margot does decide to hook up with him like afterward and she's the one that suggests they get out of there. But Robert later admits that he didn't tell her he was 33 because he was worried it would change things. Meaning he knew being honest about his age could be a problem for Margot, so he decided to withhold that information and let her believe that he was younger so that she wouldn't change her mind. That's messed up. At some point, he admits that when she went home for break, he was worried that she would start hooking up with some hot high school boyfriend she had, exposing not only his insecurity with himself and his age, but also how he views Margot as a sexual object since he immediately started preoccupying himself, thinking about her sex life, and getting jealous over it even though they weren't really established to be dating. Also messed up is the way that he lashes out at her after seeing her at the bar. I have to wonder, one, how often he's showing up to that bar hoping to run into her, and two, if it was another situation where he thought that it would be like the movies and that he could casually run into Margot and like reconnect. But the way he lashes out at her after she doesn't answer is scary and immature, but also kind of realistic. Because I remember seeing a TikTok on Reddit of this girl that came home after a date, and her date had followed her home. And she's talking to him through the window, trying to explain to him how inappropriate that is and how unsafe she feels. And he's just not getting it. And he goes from whiny to angry, and it's just, it's terrifying. Margot's fears are very different from Robert's. First, when she invites Robert to the school and they get stuck in a smaller room, she starts panicking, thinking that he trapped them in there so he could attack her. And then when they're going in the movies and he's kind of quiet in the car and she's not sure why, she imagines him getting mad and attacking her. And when they're back at his house about to hook up and Margot's realizing she's changed her mind, she doesn't feel safe enough to say that. And she has this conversation with like an imaginary self, arguing that it's easier to just go with it and let it happen because she's scared of how he'll react if she denies him sex. There are so many points in this movie where Margot feels unsafe, but she just keeps going with what's happening because he's a nice guy, or she doesn't want to make him mad, or she doesn't want to be mean. And I think that's really a big thing to think about. Even when she talks to the police officer about him being outside her workplace, she questions if he could even see her through the doors. Kind of like, minimizing her own fear even though it is justified because he showed up to her workplace whether he could see her through the doors or not doesn't matter she told him that she didn't want to talk to him and he showed up to her place of work and in context this story is about a 33 year old man and a 20 year old like the power dynamics are always unbalanced even in the points of the movie where margot thinks the power is in her favor it's not it, it never is I will say that breaking into his house to put a tracker on his car was wrong, but it ties back to the quote at the start of the movie. Robert followed a young college student from her place of work to her home because he thought that she was pretty and wanted to meet her. Margot snuck into the house of an older man who lashed out at her when she said she wasn't interested because she was afraid that he was going to hurt her and she wanted to be able to avoid him. These are very different things. These are very different things and I really like how the movie explores both sides of it even though it's still very clear that Margot, her fears are justified in robert's anger not so much i really like the movie and i recommend checking it out i enjoyed it as a movie it was fun to watch but it also got me thinking and it's given me a lot to think about i watched it last night and i'm making this today like what does that say the one thing i'm left wondering though 
was it dark when they were hiding in the drain from the fire? Or did he light up so that it wouldn't be so scary? 